A very good morning to you. Let me turn that down so I don't have to listen to myself. Um, hello, how are you all? It's not me today. Well, it, I, I mean, it is me. Hello. But actually, it's going to be Helen, hence why this is here and I will be vanishing around the corner in just a minute. Um, how are you? Are you well this morning? Thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah, it's very good to have your company. Thanks, Joe. Uh, who else have we got? And Anne as well. Oh, you're yeah, coming in. Hello, hello. Now, um, <clears throat> we have got the next in the Pentacular range from Helen. Am I allowed to touch it? Yes. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> I didn't know, you know. I didn't know. Um, if you need a tape measure in your life. I needed a tape measure at the weekend. Could I find one anywhere? You were no. waiting because I'd taken everything out of the cupboards. <laughs> and then the one thing I needed was somewhere at the bottom. Uh, but this is gorgeous, let me show you. Ooh. I mean, if that does not say gift, look at that. I don't know what does. And are we saying the pin is it's coming with it? Yeah, the tape measure comes with it, yeah. So Helen has called this a... Uh, Tape measure cosy, which I love and will forever adopt. <laughs> I'll be honest, because as Helen said, well, what else is it there for? But to keep it cosy, I can't argue that. Simply can't argue that. And then we're going to be demoing. I say we. Uh, this. So for those of you that went for the, now, it was the Deco. Miami Deco. Miami Deco. Mm. This is the scrolling Deco. And Helen will explain all about this later, but let me show you on a close. Ooh. How it pops on that black silk. Just stunning. And we'll go through the kits and everything with Helen in just a minute. I wanted to show you um, a couple of other things. You know, we had the mystery box, right? <laughs> Everyone loves a mystery box, <laughs> apparently. Uh, but we had the mystery box arrive, and we still don't know whose it was. So uh, our supplier said, well, you know, if you want to load it, see if you can sell it, that's fine. And we were talking about it the other day because I was wondering whether or not I could dye my jeans. I've got black jeans that are no longer black. They're now grey. And then I was rummaging in the mystery box, and it's got intense black dye. And... Um, ocean blue so it's got those fabric dyes in there i finally got around to loading those up and also this you put this in the drum and this is espresso brown uh, so you know they're there because i promised i would load them we talked about them the other day i've also got some sewing and darning needles just in case anybody fancied some sewing and darning needles with the little gold colored tippy bits yes all of that uh from pony do you know much about pony mm-hmm what, what, what can you tell us about Pony? They do needles and knitting. They do needles and knitting. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thanks. I mean, I didn't ask if you had an extensive knowledge. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. We'll go with that. Thank you very much. Um, I've also got 100% cotton Ada. All right, Ada. <laughs> oh. um, I always I think it should be followed by Love Lace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I've also got one left of uh, my first embroidery kits but then i dug around and found more first embroidery which feels like it should be the second embroidery but it's not it's still the first which after we've just seen what helen's brought to wear i feel slightly embarrassed showing you but it's cute, if you are just starting out this is where you start indeed and then you move on to the wonderful world of of mccookery <laughs> <laughs> yes um in which case if you are at that point you might need a hoop, I've got some hoops. And if you just want every color of thread, it's there. Talking of thread, we have got still some more, just a handful left of these. And these are 40 spools. I mean, yours will be, it's a lucky dip, but 40 spools for 14.99 or something something really 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 ridiculous um, because they're taking up too much space in the warehouse and so I thought I would share that with you guys <laughs> <laughs> inching their way back in 
Do you know what? I'm going to put them over to that side because then we can see your beautiful <laughs> cushions and things on our dresser. I'm going to have so much fun dressing this <laughs> every show. I am aware that when I'm on a time limit, it might be quite stressful going, just put some stuff on there, it'll be fine. It could be like supermarket sweep, though. It could be like the opposite version of that. Instead of taking things off the shelf, you put them on the shelf. We, well, we time you? Yeah, I mean, it see could be happens. that. We could do that. <laughs> um, the other thing is, is just to be able to spot what's on the shelf. What have we got today? Oh, we've got the ear, um, not the earmuffs. What were they? <laughs> the scissors keeps. <laughs> For large oh. and small ears. Children's and adult size, yes. Perfect. For Hagrid and That's otherwise. It. Yeah. Uh, so those are on the dresser, looking lovely. And of course, the this is where it all started, in the spectacular range with your needle keep, mm. which is spectacular, spectacular. Yeah, so they're all still on the show. If you've missed it, if you've missed a month, then don't you worry, it's there for you. Or if you've only just found us, hi. Welcome. Um, we had that cushion on, didn't we, one time? Indeed. And we've done that one as well, haven't we? I think so. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> I seem to, rem I seem to remember this little chap, the, yeah. the stag. We've got lots. Anyway, um, I'm just going to say good morning to everyone, and then I'm going to get out of your way. And we said, oh gosh, lots of you joining us now. Uh, so we have got Jan and Sally, hello, and Anne and Kate, hello, and Ali, good morning, and Sue and Caroline, hello, and Helen, and Sean, and Grace, and Heather, good morning, and Valerie, and Severine, and another Kate, hello, and Claire, she's got a cup of tea and a donut. Oh nice. no, don't, I'm on, no, I'm on a fast day, not, 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 no, don't, all oh, donuts, <laughs> no. Um, oh, she's got two more Smarfs in the making. Oh, this is our Smarf of the week behind me there. It's the beautiful, um, sort of silvery one beautiful because it goes with everything and that's on a little bit of a discount just for this week um joe good morning she says she loves it when you and Helen get together so entertaining well thank you very much your mum said that in fact she said that we should have our own show <laughs> yeah like you a comedy out. duo <laughs> yeah. that's what she'd been watching <laughs> yeah. morning uh <laughs> I love it that we have a regular show Indeed. now, it's very good. And Jackie, good morning, and Angela and Karen and Helen, um, and Naomi, hello, and Rebecca, hello, and Elizabeth, who's shout shout to capitals, good morning! Hello! I think she's feeling very well. And Janet, good morning, and Ella and Barbara and Laurie, hello, and Margaret and Diane and Carol and Pam. Ooh, Helen creates the most beautiful things. Oh, thank right. you. Right, right. Um, so, yes, without further ado, good morning to everybody and all those people I haven't managed to mention yet. I'm going to shuffle off over there. I'm going to unplug this, take this, put it all in my, uh, in my tray. Bag of goodies. I know, right? And I'm going to shuffle off over there. Oh, look, the cat's left all their fur on my seat. Never mind. <laughs> there oh, we yes. go. I know. I know. It's a good look. It'll be fine. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Right. We should do uh, an embroidered smurf. Uh, why haven't why we? Why haven't we thought about that yet? Yeah. Why have we not? Yeah, yeah. That needs to happen. Um, and before we go any further, next month, next time I'm here, it's the last instalment for the Pintacular range for the Etui. So what I was thinking was that you should just message in and tell me what you'd like the last item to be. So, oh. um, so it's like one of those write your own stories from when you were a kid, eh? I like, love those. Do you want to go through the trap door and meet the bear or do you want to, you yes. know, end up in the circus? So I thought I was the only person that had those. Nobody else ever remembers them. You can them. buy them now as well. Can you? You can, yeah. I didn't realise that you could. I thought they'd gone out of vogue, but I purchased them not that long ago. So they're For really exciting. For you or someone else? Maybe that's all I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. No, they, they were they were a gift, but they were a kind of gift to me as well because I get, get to, to hear to about them. it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. um, Bear Grylls also does a version, Ooh. but his is: Do I repel down here or do I just abseil? I think that's the same thing as yeah, it? yeah. I was yeah. going to say, or do I just <laughs> jump? Um, There's something suitably bonkers yeah. either time. Yeah, and you have to choose. <laughs> Of course Freddy, you do. Freddie loves it. Death instantly or death later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Absolutely. quite badly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the active boys uh, version. Yeah, of course. Boys own 
yeah, yeah. All that kind of um, yeah so we've got uh we're doing the needle case the needle case we've already done the needle case we've got the scissors keeps the fabric um <laughs> done fabric scissors and the embroidery scissors <laughs> it's one of those mornings today and uh, we've got the uh tape measure cozy which we're doing today so have a think about what you'd like the last one to be um, so it could be an orts box so you to put your threads in it could be um, a thimble case anything come I in mean, have a think tell me what you'd like to know and we'll do it next time um to go with the range mm. so oof. an orcs box orcs no, not orcs we're not in lord of the rings well i know that's why i was <laughs> questioning <laughs> but it's it it no orcs. save the world kill the orc no um contain it in embroidered box it's like pandora's box but in reverse That'd we just put the things in, in. Yeah, if I could do that, we'd have the pandemic in a box. And we then would. We'd be fine. Yeah, um, we'd yeah, all be, be good. good. Um, I like that. An orc box. Um, I, I, no, it's I, I, boards, <laughs> as in um, thread ends. So, you know, when you're cutting and you keep the little thread ends and you put them either in the bin or you keep them to put into felting or whatever else you might be doing. Um, orts box. Orts is the word for that. A bit so. like warts, but without the wh. I'd like to think it's with an O. Yeah, no, no, warts, <laughs> but without the W. Warts. Yes. Yeah, so I think it's ORT, but yeah, but warts, but sound wise, yeah, phonetically. Wise. Phonetically, <laughs> it's, it's similar. My like goodness, that's the something. only way it's similar. I mean, really, because that's not a great selling point, is it? <laughs> I was going to say Sounds that. Sounds like warts. That no. would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would want that, I don't think. Um, anyway, so yeah, so message in, let us know what you'd like, and we'll uh, make sure that happens. So, Because uh, <laughs> if it's left to us, goodness knows what you're going to end up with. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> and then um, and we're also going to do this wee chap um, next time, which is the uh, little cruel work um, leaping stag. So, and we can have the option of putting a little French knot. Oh, little hang French on. Knot Close on up, his please. Nose. Hello. So, shall we um, slap it in here? Yeah. No. Leaping so, stag. So, yeah. So, gorgeous. we could put him a little uh, a little French knot on his nose as well. So, if you want him to be Rudolphy then um, for Christmas, then we could make him do that. But failing that, he's just a beautiful, majestic... Isn't he? Leaping slag stash reindeer. Nice. So, um, but yeah, so that'll be the next time I'm here. So, um, so we'll pop that over there. Very and, good. Um, on said dresser. Oh, and no. um, hurrah. Very nice. I like that. And um, so, yeah, so today I'm going to do the uh, tape measure cosy. And I don't know what else you'd call it, to be honest. I think, you know, <laughs> and I was stitching it and I was like, um, the mother of pub button really has to go where the retraction button is because that's so pleasing. It is <laughs> ridiculously pleasing. I was, I was so, I was so happy. When I, I feel I, when we need I a close up that, of that again too. I was too. like, yeah. So when I when I did this, I was like, this makes me really happy. So if I put that there, if you press the mother the mother of pub button in the middle, it, it retracts. Yeah. <laughs> that's the one. Made me super happy and smiley. Um, you know what? This yeah. year, that's not a bad thing. Find your joy where you can. That's what I say. Retractable tape measure. Yeah. Why All not? Mother of Pearl button. It's nice. Perfect. Love Mother Perfect. of Pearl. Anyway, so um, I, I like the fact that in olden days, people's false teeth used to sometimes be made of Mother of Pearl. The really high-end false teeth. Did they? Can you imagine that? Sitting at dinner. Mother of Pearl teeth. Yeah, but they wow. used to also pass them down from family member to family member. Like when you'd... Ooh gone and um, so they dig around in your mouth and yeah oh you'd, you'd get somebody's false teeth you get auntie bessie's fal false teeth like if they were a good set do you know what though you wouldn't be able to eat into an apple with those would you i mean you know <laughs> that's not gonna... deviled kidneys only i'm afraid <laughs> no it's, it's, it's that kind of that kind of lifestyle you're living i don't think you're bothered about apples wow. so you won't be bothering the peasant food um it would be yeah shiny teeth all the way deviled kidneys mother of pearl teeth yeah so yeah Do you I know <laughs> suddenly this year doesn't seem so bad <laughs> <laughs> i don't have to have deviled kidneys and i've got my own teeth <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but mother of pearl teeth i mean you've seen those in america and things where the kind of um rap stars have uh grills yeah. and they have like diamond grills and yeah. things yeah i think mother of pearl could make a comeback it could <laughs> It could. So I'm just throwing it out embroidery. there for the Renaissance people out there. <laughs> I'd like a mother of pearl grill, please. It's, uh, <laughs> like, there's something to be said about that. There's an option there, I feel. 
Just throwing it out there for you guys, you know, just saying. <laughs> for anyone. I mean, that's a very generous, a generous Anyone who offer. wants to get on that, it's out there, okay? Um, <laughs> we should stitch. We, we should, should. We should get stitching. Anyway, <laughs> oh, so um, what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd focus on some of the embroidery for this little beast. Um, so the um, scrolling deco. So we did its twin, um, what, two, three months ago? Hang on, we, yeah... Got too too far along to a remember. While, we, a little while ago. Some time ago. Some time ago <laughs> covers a lot of. It's like a fairy tale. Yes. Uh, uh, I can few still years remember. Years ago in a century. Yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, so in far away land, uh, where we can all speak to each other and be in the same room. Um, <laughs> yeah. Remember those days, children. Um, so yeah, we did the twin to this, which was the um, Miami Deco. And this is scrolling deco and they were both inspired by architectural details from the deco period so um i thought it'd be really lovely to get the second one on um because they do work really nicely as a pair but you don't have to do them as a pair you might just prefer this one and this is the way to go so this one has the lovely addition of uh sparkly bits on too because why hang not? on close up of said sparkly, said bits, sparkly bits so let's go let's mm. go sparkle mm. i'll try and catch the light oh yeah yeah so yeah Nice. I always get confused about left and right on this program. Do you know what? I've been doing this for nearly a year. It's only because it's in Still reverse no for the idea. camera. I go, I go this way and I think, yep, yeah, that'll get it nearer into the nope. centre. No. <laughs> so I like just floating along. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway. No, no think, idea. Think reverse. I can't do it either. Yes. Anyway, well, that makes me feel better. So, um, so I thought we'd have a go at this. So it's a lovely range of kind of, it'd be suitable for beginners to intermediate levels. So if you've not done it before, it, the diagrams are there. It takes you step by step through it. I'm going to demonstrate a good number of them. You can obviously rewatch this. Do you get all so the sparkly bits in the kit? You get everything in the kit, apart from the hoop that you'd want to pop it in to stitch it. And apart from your embroidery scissors which I know that you sell both of them now. So uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One stop shop. Including uh, unicorn ones. Indeed. Yep. Indeed. The iridescent unicorns. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. So um, we've got all sorts of things. So we've got chain stitch, stem stitch. We've got a bit of burden stitch, raised chain band, leaf stitch, buttonhole. Uh, we've got herringbone. We've got fly stitch. We've got the sequins and beads. We've got French knots. So a nice little selection there and satin stitch at the bottom how could i forget satin stitch so um so i thought we'd start with um burden stitch so burden stitch is a really nice stitch if i just show you the close-up a second so we can uh burden stitch burden yes um so it's this one here it gives you a lovely covering and um and basically it's named after miss burden who was william morris's sister-in-law and she was oh, the head okay. of the Royal School Needleworks workroom for a while. So it's not that it's just really difficult and a It's a beast of burden, yeah, no, it's <laughs> a, your, your struggle your way through. It's, it's one of those says that says what he does on the tin, it's just going to be horrible. Yeah, that's, that, that's why I chose it. I thought you'd really hate it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's up there with warts. Let's, let's do this. June says, is there a, is there a need for an, uh, an after 9pm version of us? <laughs> <laughs> with wine. Post watershed. <laughs> yeah. Bring the gin and the cheese. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gin and cheese. I'm, I'm, I've tried to not talk about food. How far have we got into this program without mentioning food? No, we've done, we've done well. We've I done quite well compared it? to what I normally like. It's eight minutes. All of eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, possibly we could do that at some point. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, if we go into the close up a second, let's check we're right. on. Uh, Check we're in the right place where you are. Oh, I love it when it works. Um, right, let me move this out of the way. We're going to put in some lines, and can you see the ones at the top like this? They're little bars. This is for another stitch that I'm going to do later, raised chain band. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our stitches in, and we want to put them a nice even distance. I'm using two strands of the um, thread at the moment, and it's stranded cotton. Let's get that off there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work along and try and get a nice even distance in between the stitches um, you can use your needle to try and work out uh, what your distance looks like can you see I've flipped that needle over so I can see what my gap is so now you see I meant I happened to mention this on a Ho Chan <laughs> show the other day yeah and it was met with quiet disbelief with what using the needle to help measure? No, no, no. I sometimes when I do blanket stitch, yes. I sometimes put a couple of little marks on my nails so that I can just 
do oh, it yeah. evenly and use that as a marker. Yeah, but this is like a... Like what you have to hand. Yeah, so this is like when you do dressmaking, you're making hems and stuff as well. Some people like to do that, the same thing then. Um, so it just speeds it along if you struggle to get them nice and even. Do you know what? Don't judge. That's what yeah, I Yeah, no, I was I was. Don't judge if that's what works for you. Ridicule. Oh, <laughs> did you get one of those? Did you just say that, looks? <laughs> was it that? Was it... Um, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, but I am judging you quietly. Judge it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quietly. Was, it, was it that? We might not be able to be friends because you're a bit strange. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. <laughs> Margaret says that she's looked up orts. Yes. And she said, yep, yeah, an orts and end box. Yes. I'd like to have it as an orts and all box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we could do that for you. Thanks. Um, thanks. Um, <laughs> Lo would like it to be, um, oh, she's sewing. Oh, yeah, she's meant to be working, but uh, she said it's sewing, so she's watching. Good girl. Yeah. Um, Susan's already placed her order. Well done, you. Hurrah. Elizabeth says that we're bonkers. Well, um, we knew that, I think. We, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, and uh, Karen is loving the idea of a mother of fell grill. See? I knew, might that catch on. I knew that people would want this. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not want it, but maybe, you, you know, you, would enjoy it on someone else. You're saying that. You're saying that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I don't know. Not it's sure. not a massive step from sparkly tights to a mother of pearl grill, is it? Do you see sparkly tights on me? Oh, uh, no, maybe not on you, but, you know, there's a lot of sparkly tights out there. There are. There <laughs> are. I keep getting on my Facebook feed a company called Snag Tights yes. or something. Yes, yes, yes. And they just seem to be for the larger lady. No, they're not. You know oh, what it is? Not. But the adverts they send me are... No, you know what it is? What? It's because very few people can actually purchase tights that fit them. So I, yeah, for one example... one size fits no one. Yeah, well, so for example, <laughs> you either get the Nora Batty ankles. Nice. And, oh, and, they f and they are kind of too long and too big here. Yeah. Or you've got the crotch down by your knees. It's a look. And, and it fits in the waist, but it's not out your waist. <laughs> so but then that would go with your wrapper mother of pearl type look to have yeah, the I mean, crotch not with quite tights. low. Nobody wants their tights down there. <laughs> no, I know, but I really don't <laughs> want to see boys with their bottoms hanging no, out of their trousers no. but either. But you know where that's from, though? What? See, this, this is, one this of, is this brilliant. Is I don't facts. know how you know all of this. This is a but fashion fact, it. right? This comes from, from the idea that if you were coming from somewhere that was, you know, maybe a bit troublesome in the community, you could maybe get into trouble walking down the street. The idea was that if uh, those places, a lot of people would pass their clothes down from family member to family member, and it would be you don't want to mess with him because look how big his brother is. Oh. See, and then it became a thing became a thing so yeah so it's like you don't want to mess with me because i've got a big brother these fit the big brother at some point and now he's too big for them that's amazing so, i love how you know this i love fact. how you know this so um hello uh oh margaret seems to think that an orts and all box for me might be too big <laughs> and, uh, yeah she's thinking <laughs> labeled with corners for things like leads oh, oh. okay I mean, it's an option. We have all these options. We've got of lots of options. I mean, I think that's the only one that's actually been suggested. But, um, you know, there might be other options. Yeah, I was... Uh, yeah, we're open to open to suggestions. And if, if nothing comes forward, I'll just make something up. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Right, so I put some bars in. So um, you'd obviously do that all the way up. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to get some of the light green now and um, we're going to throw some of the light green in. So you're blending it through. I love how you blend with threads. Well, you can play with the colour you see and it's, um, it just works in a really nice way across the piece then. So, um, yeah, so just play with the colour. Have fun with it. And all the colours in there. And that's the other thing you do so well is mm. pick the colour. I love colour. I really, really love colour. First thing all of us said was we love your jacket today, oh, by the way. There's thank you very much. Sparkle of, uh, of colour down the front. Do you know, well, I say that these people with sparkly tights are one step off a mother of pearl grill. I'm constantly covered in sparkle. I'm like a magpie. If it's got 
glitter on it, I'm interested. <laughs> so it's just automatically, you know, that I, I saw a sign recently that said, I get easily distracted by shiny things. Yes, but yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. <laughs> that's me, always has been. So, um, yeah, so basically that's, I'm probably the person the mother of Pearl Grill is probably for in, in a few years. <laughs> well, I mean, you said that you'd had dental work yesterday. So, I did, yeah. You know, <clears throat> yeah. Maybe you missed a trick there. <laughs> yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to have that conversation with my dentist. By the way, David, can we uh, think about Mother of Pearl Grills next, please? It's an option. <laughs> I'm sure it's an option. <laughs> to be fair, he'd probably look at me like I was completely crazy and then have a think about it. But um... well, I'm, Yeah, I like that he wouldn't just dismiss it out of hand. I couldn't possibly have anybody that I worked with at any stage of my life that would dismiss these ideas out of hand. I want <laughs> at least a conversation about it. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else. I want an explanation as to why we're saying no if we're saying no. So, um, you know, if it's a good reason, I'll, I'll accept that. But um, other, otherwise, I, I want us to go Were ahead. you the child that always asked why? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you mean the what do you mean the child that asked why? Oh my goodness, this is still one of my favourite words. This is why you know about big baggy pants, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, this is how I, I navigate the world, basically. It's, uh, why are we doing that? Okay, Wh why did we choose that option over this option? Okay, what made you think that was a good <laughs> What? What and why? What and why and what if is, uh, they're basically my go-tos. All the time. Works a treat. <laughs> so, Works insight a treat. into what I was like as a child and an adult. Aww. Anyway. <laughs> and you have a twin. Oh, yeah. Everyone's feeling for your mother right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and an older sister who's like only 18 months older as well. Yeah. Wow. Crazy times. Yeah. She have a medal? Bless her. She should have a medal. Yeah. She should. Yeah. We, um, we, we always used to say that um, my mum... She used to do this thing where she'd go, I'll count to three. Oh, yeah, we do that. She only ever got to three once. And that was so alarming. <laughs> <laughs> that it never happened again. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember, because we were following my sister when she got to three, and we'd never got past two and three quarters before. And my brother and I were both looking at my sister like, are you crazy? It was like a Mexican standoff. <laughs> and, um, and she got to three and, and, and said alarming things happened. And, and she never got there again wow. um, because she was a, a firm believer in saying, you don't say something and then not do it. <laughs> so no, and actually when you teach, you soon learn that, especially yeah. when you work in, um, in a school that's in special measures in the middle of Coventry. Yeah. You soon learn... You have to back um, it up. That, yeah, whatever you threaten, you, you have to follow through with. Yeah. Ask yeah. me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I could think maybe you've probably got a few stories. Oh, would, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that 9 p.m. show is a beckoning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After the water gate, yeah. Oh, uh, right. Shall we finish the burden stitch? Oh, yes. I don't know how I got distracted off that, but all the time. Anyway, so what we're going to do is with my um, alternative colour, my light green, I want to pass over the top of one bar and just tuck underneath the next bar and I'm just stitching down the middle of the shape and then I want to then tuck out from underneath that bar on the other side of it, pass over the top of one and then tuck underneath the next one. That's so it basically clever. it's supposed to look like it's basket weave, like basket weave. so it's, it should look like I've woven over and under. Okay. Okay, so you keep going like that. I love this stitch. It's so nice. And um, you just need to keep going down the central line. It'll help to set you up. And then what you'll do is once you've gone down that central line, you'd then step down a step. So you'd come, took out from under one of the bars you passed over before. And you this want to sit clever. nice and tucked up against the row that you've already put in so there aren't any little gaps. And what you'll, you'll get eventually is you'll get this lovely coverage with the light green, but you'll see little flecks, like little spots of the um, mid-green that I did the bars in. Oh, nice, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to really be exotic with your colour changes, you could put one of the dark pinks underneath as your bar. Ooh. So you get a real contrast. So 
which you've done so, that. Yeah, so it is like weaving, isn't it, effectively? Yeah. So it's just, it's all stitched in, but it looks, it has the effect of weave. And then for the next row, you go back to the same level as you did with the first row. So it's basically a half drop stitch. So it's very straightforward. Yeah, but when you know. Yeah, like anything, I don't know what I don't know, isn't it? So it's, um, you, once you've been shown it, it's not that complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And does so that go all the going. way around the swirly bit? That Yeah, absolutely. On both of them or so just the one? Just on this one here. So I've done it like a stitch sampler so that we can get lots of different stitches in. So just this swirl here is the um, burden stitch. Beautiful. So um, I want to show you raised chain band now because that also has bars in. So I've started those bars. So I'm just going to get this thread up out of the way. Get the needle off it so that we can... There are a lot of bars going on today, aren't there? I know. Yeah. None Gin of the bars are open, so I thought <laughs> I'd add a few home. in. Yeah. <laughs> so with this one, where's my needle? Um, I'm using a double strand again. I'm using the yellow this time. And what I'm doing is, again, I'm putting the, putting the um, stitches in. Um, so you can see they're just sitting at 90 degrees to the shape. So um, you'll work your way around. Okay. Now you're stitching through the silk, but also you've got something underneath. Yeah. That. So I've got a layer of calico, which is in your pack as well. So okay. if I just uh, show you show you a corner, can you see that? No, nope. it has to be this corner. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You can see that um, there's a layer of calico underneath, and it's just to, to um, allow a little bit of stability. The silk's nice and strong anyway, but um, it's to um, because we're stitching quite an open pattern, but it has swirls in it and, and bits that have embroidery all round, but then gaps in the middle. It's so that you don't get puckering. Oh, okay. So it helps to hold your tension. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to pull the fabric in, you stitch tension in with um, a finer layer. Yeah. So it's just to give you a bit of stability and to that fabric and just makes it feel a bit nicer when you're working it. So Very you good. pop it in the frame at the same time, you put the calico and the fabric together and then tension your frame make sure it's nice and taut and then you'll um, make sure that there's no wrinkles and puckers in either layer before perfect. you start stitching perfect so raised chain band is a fun stitch so let me actually just get rid of this make that taut so I don't end up are there still stitches that you don't know yeah, there's loads of stitches. I'm learning things all the time. Sometimes it's not about a stitch. Sometimes it's about um, the way that a stitch is created. So the way that I show stitches um, is mostly the way that the Raw School Needlework has taught me to do stitches. So the way that they show uh, the technique is um, kind of honed over all these years. And basically what they do is they do the, the most effective way to repetitively get the same result. Oh, so, okay, right, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so to standardise. Yeah, to standardise way of doing yeah. it. Um, so it's not by any means the only way of doing it. There's lots of ways of doing it. And um, so they've, these stitches all come from somewhere. They've all kind of travelled quite a lot. And different places do them in different ways quite so often. So regional stitching. Yeah, sometimes there's regional differences. Sometimes Amazing. it's about, um, so some of the American ways of doing stitches, for example, are slightly different because apart from anything else, they didn't want to thread waste. So some of it relates to their Puritan past and those values of not being wasteful. So oh some of them, the stitches look very similar on the front, but are quite different on the back when you look. So, yeah. um, so it's quite an interesting way. So for example, they do colonial knots, we do French knots, colonial knots are slightly smaller and tighter and they use slightly less thread. So, um, and that would make, I guess that would make a difference over a, yeah, over, over an expansive run of something, yeah. uh, spread of something. So yeah. um, the same with trellis, we do long stitches on the front and back, whereas they would do a, lo a long stitch on the front and a short stitch on the back. And they have to try and, the, the reason why we do a long stitch on the front and a long stitch on the back is because it's easier to get it to sit parallel because the tension's yeah. the same way each time. Whereas if they're um, changing, if they're coming up here and going down here and coming up here and going down here, it very slightly moves apart. So you have to make allowances. So you either have to not be worried about the fact they're not perfectly parallel hmm. or you have to make allowances for that movement. So, wow. um, so that suddenly gets really technical. Yeah. So basically um, the thread saving aspect can create its own problems. So you have to think about how concerned you are about that 
or how you're going to make alterations to the way that you stitch to allow for that. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's the, the way that I stitch. But I mean, every time I teach people, like, I'll, they'll kind of come across something or a different name for something and they'll go, oh, have you done this stitch? And I'll be like, well, why don't we do this stitch? And I'll be like, I don't know that stitch. What, show me what it is. What does it look like? And they'll show me and I'll be like, oh, I know that one is this. That's the name for that. Um, so it's quite quite um, a different vocab sometimes rather than a different stitch. Oh, I like that. So um, so it's all it's always learning. I think that's the thing. One of the things I love about my subject, you know, you're always going to learn something. You're always going to be challenged by it. Yeah. And yeah, you're yeah. never ever going to know. You're never going to get to that horizon. You're always chasing that horizon that you're never going to reach. And I love that. Um, it constantly changes. The terrain changes. The combination of threads and fabrics and designs make and combinations of stitches with all of those things makes things different. Mm. So, and then as I say, when you throw in the interaction with lots of other people who are also passionate about this subject um, and bring their own heritage with them, you kind of have this amazing conversation. So it's great, so. Well, I don't know why we're not all doing it. it sounds amazing. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. Susan makes the point that it's also mm. what the end use of the embroidery was for as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought of that because because you always bring us things that look like they should be heirloom pieces. <laughs> yeah. I just want to stick more on the wall. Yeah. But they can't all go on the wall. I think it, I think it is that. I think quite often people um, people don't think about the end result. What was it for? And also the limitations of being able to get something. Yeah. So traditionally they may have been um, restricted obviously by what they could get their hands on um, whether it was reusing fabrics they'd already got in the house or whether it was you know you have a merchant that comes or you have a local shop that you could get to you know we're very fortunate even during the pandemic and these days that we have online abilities and we get things from all around the world really really swiftly in reality and that there, there wasn't that ability you know yeah. we, they weren't able to get their hands on um, you know what we what they would have classed as quite exotic and luxury items, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at very high cost um, because of the amount of danger involved with the travel at that time. Yeah, danger. So, it is. It is a form of danger money, isn't it? You yeah. know the amount that things would then cost. Well, exactly. I mean, uh, the sheer amount of time that it would have taken to get items across from, you know, silk items, for example. Um, but also, um, yeah, I mean, the then the Indian fabrics and things. It, it took a long time to get on a boat from India to here and then to get through the ports and through. And there was, you know, a lot of um, people lost in that trade. So to the, to the sea and to piracy and various other things. So yeah, if you true. think about it in those senses, you know, we'd got a fantastic wool industry and we'd got linen and things already. So we quite often, a lot of stuff was done with the domestic, the domestic um, items that you could get. So that's why we we would see a lot of like wool items and wool embroidery, for example, particularly yeah. for domestic settings. <coughs> and then obviously you're looking at the different levels of uh, affordability, where you are and what you can afford to spend. So and whether it was for a special special occasion that then would be passed on. Yeah, that's the other thing, isn't so, it? How special was it? Oh, yeah. good, so, good, good. Marvelous. Now, what, where were we? Right, we're going to do raised chain band, which is this one here. So I've put my bars in. And if I'm going to show you the, I want to show you the uh, stitch diagram for this, because it's really lovely stitch. So you can see what kind of pattern it makes. If I just bend this over a second. So if I just bring this, this one. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can see it creates this lovely chain like effect. And we're going to use the bars by weaving over and under them. Okay, so um, that's amazing. Yeah, so it's a really, really clear diagram that you've got there. So you come up and then you lay your thread to the left. And then what you're going to do is um, come up uh, under the first bar, lay it to the thread to the left, and then come under the same bar. Come up in the middle and that's your first link okay so you sort of loop it through yeah so then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing again so you're going to go up to the left late to the left down on the right and up now you can i'm leaving it quite loose and sitting in the middle so it's going to be just a, a single row in the middle so you see that really stark yellow either side of it mm. but if you wanted to you could actually do multiple rows 
so you could just squash it if I just uh, if I squash it across you can see it goes really tiny and you can put another two two rows in there but I want it quite open and sitting centrally just as one row so I can see that lovely strip of yellow um, does that make sense yeah totally. so as I say I'm going to repeat that get my hair out of the way so have it laying round to the left pass underneath the bar come up in the middle as I say this is raised chain band so it's like a cousin of normal chain stitch mm. We've got lots of variations of colour of families of stitch. So this is a, a variation of of um, chain. I've never seen nice, this one. It's a nice variation. Yeah. So and as I say, you can do it singularly so you see that bar really clearly, or you can do it so that you're packing the bar. If I was going to do it so I was trying to cover that bar, I'd have the bar a much closer colour um, to the colour that I'm working over the top with. But this is the joy of it, isn't it? You can you can really get some shading in here by using different tones. Yeah, exactly. You can really play with it. Very nice. So you can see it building up. And does that go all the way around that it's square? It's going to go bit? all the way up. It comes all the way up to here on this one. So it's really if I if I bring this one in. Can you see, um, you can see the bar all the way up. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So it's quite, quite a different texture. So even though these two have started with bars, the bird and stitch and the uh, um, raised chain band have got quite a different feel to them. Completely different. No, yeah. it's amazing. Righty-ho. Um, so, shall we start another stitch? Which one are we going for next? What's up next? Ooh, what's new, pussycat? Um, it's it's really a beginner one. But yeah, do you know what? They're not complicated stitches. That's the thing. It's, um, it depends on confidence. Okay. So what I'd say is, nobody's sitting at home judging you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and what you could do is, if you wanted to, you could actually practice your stitching on your calico first, because nobody's going to see that. So if you wanted to, you could just put your calico in the hoop have a practice at those stitches first and then you could put it into the frame and have a go with this so it's one of those things that there's nothing complicated about this I've got questions just, yeah yeah um, okay so my question is would the stitch look wrong if you pushed the butt end of the needle through grabbed the thread and took the needle straight back out again grab the thread as long as the needles in the thread Sorry, the, the thread's on the needle. <laughs> That's the way that <laughs> then works. Then it'll come out. Then, uh, and the needle follows it through. It'll be fine. Okay, you can um, use a tapestry needle if you prefer. But you well, can that use was the, the other question. The needle. So I quite often use the blunt end of the needle when I'm passing under so I don't catch on a bar or catch on the fabric so I know it's going to just slide under. Yeah, so, so Helen said fine. she noticed, um, Margaret said she noticed that you're leading with the eye of the needle. Could you do this chain with a blunt needle? Yeah, yeah, you could use a tapestry needle if you wanted, so a blunt needle um, if you find it easier to do that. Um, but as I say, I quite often use the blunt end when I'm passing underneath if okay. I'm doing woven wheels or whip wheels or this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's just a habit to go under so you catch on less things with your point of your needle um, but yeah as I say it's, it's not um, they're not complex it's about confidence so it's one of those things that just give it a bash nobody's sitting at home with you going oh, that's, it's, you know, it's like the stitching police you know it's they're all there they're all explained I'm demonstrating most of them today and um, and what I'm not demonstrating today, I've demonstrated on Natasha's programs before. Yeah. So it's one of those things you should be able to have that full repertoire and and know what those stitches look like and how to do them anyway. The instructions take you through step by step. You've got nice clear photos, and um, the only thing that will make it different is obviously assuming that you're then stitching correctly as per the diagram and as I'm showing you. Um, then the only thing that makes it look slightly different is stitch tension, so how much or little you're pulling the thread to. And um, I, I tend to, mine, to, to pull mine till they resist. So I, I like a tightish thread because um, I think the tension is easier to control when it's tighter. Um, so the finish is easier to control to regulate. Um, but as I say, that's a quirk of how I stitch. 
Um, so it's a bit like handwriting. Um, as I say, I can teach you an A, a B, a C, but your handwriting eventually will be different to mine. Uh, thankfully for you, because mine is messy. So <laughs> <laughs> but your stitching is so, beautiful, so it's yeah. fine. <laughs> so it's um, so it's one of those things. It's like the stitch length and the stitch tension is the only thing that will make it look different. Then, um, assuming you're following the same plan and the stitch te technique as I'm showing you. So yeah, I mean, just just give it a go. You'll surprise yourself. So yeah, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, in a good way. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you buttonhole stitch. So buttonhole is going to go in here. And if I just bring mine over a second, uh, you can see it's the bright yellow in the centre. Now buttonhole, I always think of it as a spine with legs. So, um, so to remember which place to start, start on the spine. So the side that gives you the spine ridge, start yeah. on that side. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to put um, the ridge in with the buttonhole and then on the other side to cover the paint line we're going to put a stem stitch row in the same thread so you'll get a similar looking row on both sides so what we're going to do then is a spine with legs okay yeah. so i've come up here because my spine is going to be on the outer edge right so i'm uh, just untangling from around my knot my uh, bar um, and then you can see that gives me a loop. I'm going to come up on the paint line in the loop and pull in the direction that I'm wanting it to travel. And I want these to be about a thread width or so apart, so slightly more than that. So go down where the foot of the thing is, come up on the spine in the loop and pull. So we're still on the spine, and we haven't got legs yet. Yeah, we've got legs. Oh yeah. So, so if these oh are little I feet, bit, and that's the spine. I'm with you. This is one of those stitches I always have to. Say. People have always got a stitch that they have to really think about before they start. Buttonhole is mine. So the reason for it was I could never remember which end to start at, which end to come up at. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you come up on the spine, and you go down at the foot. Okay. So start on the spine, so yeah. Um, so down at the foot and up on the spine. So how is this varying from a uh, blanket stitch? Blanket stitch is generally on the edge of something. Okay. Um, the buttonhole, you used to put it in and then you cut the buttonhole. Yeah. So it was never on the edge of something until you, because you did, you stitched it and then you trimmed it. So okay, so just the other way round. Yeah, so basically it was generally in the middle of something yeah. um, rather than on the edge of something. It would eventually be on the edge of something. Yeah. And then there's variations. There's, there's Taylor's buttonhole and Twisted buttonhole. And again, it's a, it's a family of stitches. So, so you know, if you're going to do something once, you might as well do it a thousand times. So, well, um, that's just <laughs> it. And, and things like this, you might end up doing a thousand times, especially if it's a buttonhole. So it's <laughs> yes. best, to, best to have some variety there for Well, you. I mean, some of them are really nice, though, because, I mean, as I say, there's um, things like the twisted buttonhole and Taylor's tail buttonhole. They, they look different, so you have a more fancy decoration on the spine. Mm. So um, some of them are really sweet. So um, it's just, you know, over time, it was like... You know, if you're a tailor, for example, and you're doing hand-stitched buttonholes, which, of course, they all used to be, you know, what makes your jacket fancier than the next jacket? You know, it's all the same stitches for a buttonhole, yeah. so how are you going to decorate it? So, it's like, I think some of it happened, it's happy accident, and some of it's, um, you know, the art of kind of creation. So, it's um, kind of playing around with it. So, you can see that that's going in quite quickly. Oh, it really is. Yeah. So. Yeah, so when it starts to go on a curve. Yeah. Just like you've done there. I always think of it around. as the spike. If I, the way I remember this is I always like to think in pictures. So the spokes of a bike. Right. Oh, With these yeah, things, okay. it's the same if you're herring boning around a corner or whatever. If you open the spaces out on the outer edge and they get closer together on the inner edge, 
yeah. it will shift itself so it works. Oh, okay. So always think spokes of a bike when you go around a curve. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that's the point of reference I always use because it helps. So me if remember. you added little seed beads on, would they be like the little clatter things that you used to put on Spoky your spokey dokies? Sp what are they called? Spoky dokies. Spoky dokies. You can get them in cereal packets. Yeah. Yeah. I always think that was for the equivalent of the child who's like the cat that goes missing. It's like the child who's always cycling where they shouldn't be you know it's like you have, hear them. have you have you seen this child be like barry get yourself home <laughs> uh, you know like tung, 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 like you, you can't hide can you there's no hiding there's no that. hiding with those so no, no but no, yeah no. yeah spoky dokies but i mean yeah if you wanted to make this fancier as well you could always put um little seed beads or french knots in these gaps as well i so, mean it's only that you did introduce sparkle you, Do you know? You know, you started it. I, I introduced the something. sparkle. There's always ways to sparkle it up a bit more. You know <laughs> how it is. So uh, I'm never averse to that. <laughs> so, but having got your buttonhole in, so that's it done now. What we need to do is then I want to, you could leave it like that, but I want to hide that um, paint line on the inside edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a stem stitch. So I'm going to travel forward a short distance. I'm going to pull my loop to the outside edge of that curve. I'm going to come at the halfway point, pull the extra thread to the back and pull the extra thread to the front. And the reason why I'm pulling the extra thread to the back and then to the front is because rather than in one motion is because it causes more friction on the thread to do it in a one -er. it kind of soars through the fabric. Okay. So your fabric, your thread condition will be better if you do it in two motions. That's very true. So. Uh, Naomi wants to know how you get rid of the marks on the fabric. Well, these particular marks are actually, we're going to be covering all of them. So you don't need to worry too greatly about it. But with these particular marks, if you iron it from the back afterwards, they're um, actually thermoreactive. So they'll come off. That's very clever. So, um, so yes. And uh, yes, Elizabeth, we do have seated frames on the website. We should do anyway. I did order some. Yeah, you definitely did have. We did. We had some last time, didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah, we can we can sort that. That's no problem. And if not, it's just a matter of a couple of days and I can get one. So you can see the stem stitch goes in again quite rapidly. Oh, so do you, you repeat it coming down the other side? Um, we've already got it on one side. We've got a ridge on one side already. Because the spine of the buttonhole. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we're just putting it down the stem stitch on the inside edge. Ah, I see what you And mean. it will just um, conceal that paint line. Um, oh, that Naomi was worried about. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And um, for the outside edges of any of these shapes, if you've got bits that you want to cover, you could um, stem stitch or chain stitch or back stitch any of them. So, um, so yeah. <coughs> so, oh. And if you're running out of a space to finish your thread, so normally when we finish our thread, we do it um, with two tiny stitches with the waist knot technique, two, two little stitches on or next to each other. Bring your thread to the top and then snip it off. If you're running out of spaces that you know you're going to work or you've worked everything else and you're on your last thread and you think, where can I finish this one? Yeah. Then you can tuck out from underneath the working area. So I can tuck out from underneath that yellow thread that I've already worked mm. and do a stitch hidden underneath it. So that's one stitch. Do the that's same clever. thing again. Second stitch. And then bring my thread up and snip it off. So it hides underneath the embroidery you've already put in place. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect sense. And this has come together remarkably, remarkably quickly. Yeah. And there's Geraldine saying that she loves what you bring to wear, but she's not sure she would have the patience to do it. It's only half done. I was going to say they don't, they don't take long actually. When you get, when you get rocking with it, it's um, they're not, they're not slow. And Myra would like to know: Do you ever bring your threads through wax? Um, the only time I wax my working threads is if I'm using crystals, if I'm using beads, like a lot of fancy beads or if mm. I'm using um, gold metal threads right um, uh, the rest of the time I don't um, because the thread condition should be sufficient to the work that you're putting it through well um, you bring beautiful threads and beautiful colors with yeah. you so you don't bring anything shoddy so 
No, it should, as I say, the, the, the thread that you're choosing should be up to the job. So um, with, with things like the metals, they've got sharp edges, so it's actually to just smooth down the fibres right. of uh, the working thread. Uh, whereas, um, as I say, the same with, with some glass beads. Some glass beads can be very sharp edged. Um, if you're doing a lot of it, you'll then, um, you'd then uh, just protect the thread a little bit uh, so it doesn't catch so much on the edge as it passes through it. But if you're only doing a little bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. So what I've done there is I've just started my thread with the waist knot technique, so not on the top, two small stitches, snip the knot off. And then I want to do my little sequin and then a bead and then a little French knot. Whoa, whoa, sequin, bead, French knot. Sequin, knots. bead, French knots. Okay. Sounds like and a repeat. Gym, gymnastics routine, doesn't it? Well, yeah, sort no, I, gymnastics and I were never, were never friends. <laughs> I, can't, I can't lie. I'm not built for gymnastics. <laughs> I always fancied one of those ribbons. Wi ribbon twirling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I, I think I'd be a good ribbon twirler. I think you'd be a great ribbon twirler. <laughs> I, however, would just get in a bit of a mess. <laughs> So what we're doing is um, we're going to pop the sequin on and then we're going to pop uh, one of your bugle beads on and then we're going to make sure it's sitting flat mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom and then stitch down at the end of it and then I'm going to come up just past it and use the same thread to do a little French knot. So we're going to wrap around the needle once, hold it onto the needle, slide slide it down the needle just so that your needle's down into virtually the same hole but not the same hole twist down to the face of the fabric and down okay so nice very nice do it again so you can see it's only a short distance i've hopped across there so i'm going to uh do the same thing again <laughs> june says you'd have to have an embroidered ribbon to twirl I would. <laughs> Not just Take, a plate. I didn't take somebody's here. eye out with it. It's like so <laughs> heavily embellished. It's like, you know, Indiana Jones's whipcord. I'd be like, get me across caves and canyons. And it'd be like, never mind my cook and her, and her uh, rhythmic maybe, gymnastics. Maybe that should be one of, uh, one of Bear Grylls' choices on his, on his choice show. Do you go down with just a normal rope or do you go down with a heavily, heavily Helen McCook embellished, embellished <laughs> rope? See, there's not enough decoration in Bear Grylls. That's there's the problem. not. No, he I mean, is I'm the decoration. I'm all for survival. No, I'm all well, for survival. But, yeah. but you know. could it be done in a pretty style, please? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things that I think is missing from TV these days. I quite like Challenge Annika's uh, jumpsuits. So Yeah, but you, know. you can get away with a jumpsuit. Not everyone is blessed with... or. Big yeah. girls in a jumpsuit. I think he could manage it. Yeah, he could. He could get away with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd like the Elvis style jumpsuit though. <laughs> Whatever challenge he's facing that week, he needs to have an em a suitably embellished jumpsuit. <laughs> I've got like um, flames in my head. You know, with, with like flares <laughs> of of flames. Burning love. <laughs> Flames are going higher. Is it one of those? I mean, I, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, normally he goes for more camo kind of stuff, but you know, why not? If it could be like Bear Grylls camo meets Strictly Come Dancing, why not? Crystal him up. I'd be all for that. That, but he'd be more likely to make me watch his program. I have yeah. To say. You know, I could lend you a small six-year-old boy and then you have to watch his program <laughs> quite a lot. Oh, hang on. Gemma says that she had. Um, she had a get in shape girl ribbon on a stick. Yeah. Oh. With a, with a cassette and booklet. Did the they 80s. do, did they do, Gemma, you might be the girl to tell me this. Did they do a, a ballet bar that you could supposedly like strap onto your door frame? Because I think I had that and I think it was the same company. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Get in shape girl ballet, strap on ballet bar. Sounds wrong, but <laughs> ballet bar, not belly bar. Yes. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. I mean, we're not going there. Anyway, uh, she, she used to uh, twirl around the house thing. She was the bee's knees. The other thing that y you don't see enough of these days is dealy boppers. A whaty bopper? A dealy bopper. What's a dealy bopper? You know those things on headbands and they've got little things and the springs. You and only see those on stag do's. Stars. Hen nights. No, when, when I was a child, this did happen. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> When I was a child, we went on holiday and everybody had got dealy boppers. I think it was like, where did we go? Like Minehead or somewhere like that. 
somewhere like Minehead. And I was little and they were amazing because they were like stars and moons and, and there was all these mm. really happy children. With dealy boppers. With dealy boppers. And they were fantastic. And I remember getting a dealy bopper. Me and my sister had a dealy bopper uh, headbands and my brother had what can only be described as he looked like a croupier. <laughs> um, like, but oh, one of those visors. He had like a see-through green visor. Amazing. Thing. But it looked like, you know, if he'd got those little things to hold his sleeves up, it'd look like he should have been in a speakeasy. That would have been beautiful. Yeah. So that, think, there's not enough dealy boppers in the world. Part of me has a feeling that Debbie McGee um, wears one while she... What, a dealy um, bopper? Or? No, 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 no. Oh, one of the visors while she's gardening with her marigolds on. Oh, and that's completely ruined the speakeasy thing now, hasn't Sorry. It? No, no, no. I'm just throwing it out there um, oh. because she, they, they <laughs> have a house on... Um, yeah, along the, um, I, think, I think I've got this right. Stephen will be able to tell me. Uh, in my head, that's just how I see it. Uh, they've got a house with their garden goes down to the river. And right. Stephen and I were, um, were on a boat going down, going down the river. And he's like, that's where Debbie McGee lives. Pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure. And in my oh. head, that's how I wanted to see her in her garden, gardening with one of those visors on and her marigolds because she couldn't get those fingernails dirty. What was Paul Daniels' catchphrase? She was the lovely Debbie McGee. Yeah, but there was a catchphrase after he'd done his tricks. What was, oh, it? What was his catchphrase? Come on, guys, you've got to help me with this. He's going to bother me now. Oh, I don't know, but Gemma says she looks like Andy Pandy in a jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's nothing bad about that. I mean, it's a look. It's a look. It, did, it worked for Andy Pandy. Yeah. What can I say? Now then, what, hang on. We should probably be looking at some of these. Uh, well, I'm just repeating so you can see how it looks when they're on there. Um, and you can see how quick it is. A bit beautiful. Let's see. What's not to love about a bit of glitter? Well, See? now I'd like you to do us a peacock design and have those over the feathers. Things. We could do that. Yeah, thanks. See? Beautiful. Yeah. See, we've just been having a little chat. Never mind oh. the patience bit. It's all done. You'll like this not a lot. Oh, you'll like that? this, but not a lot. Yeah, you're right. There we go. I like that. Not a lot. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you know everyone's what? coming in with you like this, but not a lot. So when people look back on on the chat for this show, yeah. they'll just they'll just see you'll like this, <laughs> but not a lot. We are not talking about Helen's embroidery. We love that. We heart know, that lot. You can't please all the people all the time. You no. just better aim to pleasing some of the people some of the time. That's that's what you have to aim for. So so yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at pleasing no people any of the time. <laughs> well, I mean, that's my forte. Just do your best. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. Right, have a so good crack at that's it. the spark of it um, on there. Uh, you do have spare beads in there, so you could put extra glitter on there if you wanted oh. to. Just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> always throwing out the idea of extra glitter. Right, let's do fly stitch. So I'm um, just going to put that in there. I'm going to get some of my medium pink. Oh, sorry, then I said they like you a lot, it's fine. <laughs> 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 the um the one I used to watch as well was it was when I was a child I'd got um you know that something Rogers and he'd got Dusty Bin. It was a TV show, and we had I had a money a money box which was a Dusty Bin. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. You've lost it, me now. It was a bin with a face. That was a really weird concept if you think about it. A, bin with a, a lot face. of a lot of the programs. Are you sure from... it wasn't Sesame Street? No, no, it was a game show. Uh, like because a lot of the TV programs, well, I think, I from our era when I was when we were kids, are very strange. Yeah, and when you look back on it. Yeah. Yeah, like Mr. Blobby. What were they thinking? I never liked that. No. Um, I tell out. you the one that I was thinking as well. Three, is, two, um, one. Yes, three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, because he was do. He used to do the. You've got to do it the right way. Three, two, one. Was his thing. <laughs> you have to do it the right <laughs> way round. And um, that took a lot of thinking about. That took more thinking no, about than anything else we've done today. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And um, and there was also, this is the Great Divide, Cholton and the Wheelies, a cartoon that I remember affectionately from childhood. But I've looked at it since and thought they were all on medication. Whoever created that was yeah, medicated. Yeah, that's like the magic roundabout, though. I think yeah. they actually were. Three, two, one with Ted Rogers. Yeah, Ted, that's it. Ted, Ted. Rogers. Yeah. I actually only recently got rid of that. 
money box. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, you don't hoard at all, do you? Do you know, there's certain things though. There's certain things I'm really brutal about and there's other things I'm just like, I, I, can, I can feel sentimental about a jumper. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Why not? It's like, I don't even in that jumper, I don't want to get rid of that. So, you know, it's one of those things. So, um, what we can do then is fly stitch. We're going to do open fly. So, you're going to come down, put a central lining so we'll get a peak for our leaf, uh, our kind of leafy shape. Come up on the left on the outside line, go down on the right on the outside line. That gives you a loop. Come up in the end of the straight stitch in the loop and pull oh yes now we do remember how and to do this down. see it's starting starting to Ooh, sleep uh, to see peeking in. in there yeah oh no see linda loved charlton and the wheelies yeah he had um the kettle witch and she used to say <laughs> she used to say i ate that dragon <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good with accents, so. Um, I but mean, that yeah. was a good accent. It, I it was an attempt. I don't ever remember watching this, so I don't. You get, you're going to have to look this up. Well, I am now. It's like Pigeon Street. No one ever remembers Pigeon Street, and I used to love oh, Pigeon Street. See, I always call myself Long Distance Clara. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always call myself Long Distance Clara because I'm always travelling to the next thing. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah. yeah, again, point of reference that if you don't know what I'm talking about, people are just like, ah, what. I mm -hmm. think they should bring back Pigeon Street. I was all for Pigeon Street and the dog. I love the theme tune to that as well. Do, do, do. Pigeon do, 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 Street, do. here are the people that you, you will meet. meet. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And Mr. Ben. Oh, yeah, it's all Mr. good. Mr. Ben, excellent. It's all good. Yeah, Mum and I used to love Pigeon Street. I say Mum and I used to love Pigeon Street. I think we liked it for different reasons. She, I love Pigeon Street because I loved Pigeon Street, and she loved Pigeon Street because I loved Pigeon Street, and it meant that she could have a cup of tea and sit down for ten minutes exactly without, without me uh, being annoying before we went to pick up my brother from school. I tell you the ones that I think are astonishing. Things like, have you ever <laughs> seen? Have you recently, since being an adult, have you seen Button Moon? Oh. <laughs> Like little bits of, and you just sort of go. He's a wooden spoon. In, uh, but Him moon. and his wife yeah. are wooden spoons, yeah. and it's made with a tin can. And you were like, "What kind of production was this?" But we loved it. That's the thing, though. Just just goes to show you don't need to spend a massive amount of money on something to make something incredible. But you yeah, do not finger mouse. That's the. That, that's oh the no! What one. a finger mouse! Finger mouse is the finger puppet. No, no, no! I was just trying to remember the theme tune. Oh, I can't remember the theme tune. No, time. I can't remember the theme tune either. No, you see, Gemma's uh, dad is a pigeon fancier, which always sounds really weird when you call someone a pigeon fancier. Uh, <gasps> but he is, so Pigeon Street was very popular in her house. Oh, it always reminds me of a song that... Um, <laughs> there was a, a chap called Derek and the Debonairs, <laughs> and he used to sing about King Standing, this particular part of Birmingham, and it, he'd got a particular part of his song, and it was like... He's talking about pigeons. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you make up a song about King and Standing and pigeons? And he's got a song about pigeons. a Sinclair C5 as well. But and you should um, you should always write about what you know. And maybe that's just And they really knew. did, but he just used to make me chuckle so much when I was a child <laughs> to be hearing this song. And he used to talk about pigeons, like tumblers and rollers and a fly in his hair. But apparently tumblers and rollers, it's a pigeon term. Oh, really? So, yes. But, um, yeah. Wow. You see, I don't know really anything <laughs> about pigeons. Apart from at school, we had to watch. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we're talking about 1986. Yeah. And Geordie Racer. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Come on. Who else was subjected to Geordie Racer? But do you remember as well, not, Ge not just Geordie Racer, that very strange children's program that you used to watch at school and they used to wheel the television in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, kind of like, and, and the eek, teacher eek, would just hope eek, that just she like, could get the V. Yeah, and then the link yeah, everything together. Yeah, yeah. It was like a yeah. massive production. And then you'd all be sitting watching this screen that's about this big. And then, um, and it was this really strange program where they were kind of doing, doing mystery things. And then there was this flying thing and the words used to light up at the bottom as it pointed at it. Oh, no, we <laughs> didn't have this. It was really odd. And, um, yeah, and they used to have um, a pencil that used to light up as well as it pointed at the words. So, very strange. 
I no, I do not know. I don't know how we turned out as normal as we are. Although I do think it's probably <laughs> accounts. Uh, you see, I wonder if people would say that we were normal. Well, uh, I very rarely call myself normal. I think I'm normal, but yeah. obviously to most people's minds, I'm probably not. Um, I, I think it's all I'm fine. I'm quite happy in my own world. Now you see, Claire was a '90s child for telly, and in the summer holidays, um, when they were home from Saudi Arabia, she used to mm. have play days with Y Bird and Poppy the Cat. I, um, yes. Yeah, I I went to drama school. Well, actually, I say I went to drama school. I was taught at drama school by the voice of Y Bird. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's good. I tell you who I think's brilliant. I used to love when we when we were really little. Um, Floella Benjamin. I love Floella Benjamin, and she still she still does um, bedtime stories on BBC. Does she? Yeah, along with she's, Tom Hardy. She's she's top. She and apart from anything else, I used to, and I don't know why she I remember this. She looks amazing, by the way. Yeah, she's amazing. amazing. Well, she also used to have these earrings, and it looked like there's polo mints hanging off them. Oh. There were little circles. No, it was just a I had quite a specific later. memory as a child. <laughs> so these earrings struck a chord. And, but they always looked like polo mints, and I was convinced she'd got polo mints hanging there. Um, so, yeah, I used to love Flawella Benjamin and her polo mint earrings. But, uh, yeah, she's amazing. So... She and looks, I want her beauty regime because she does look phenomenal. Well, yeah. But also, um, Tom Hardy. Yeah, I know. How did the children get Tom Hardy? I don't know. I don't know. Even now on the adverts that they do for Bedtime Story, he's the very last one on there. <laughs> Sit and get yourself comfortable. Yeah. Okay, Tom. <laughs> Basically <laughs> winking at all the parents <sighs> going, Tom Hardy doing Bedtime Story. There's something for everyone in that. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Something for everyone. And somewhere along the line, there's a story. I mean, <laughs> apparently. Oh, Who knew? Dear. That's good. I like that. Right. So what I'm doing with this is I talked to you about the fact that if you're worried about your paint lines, you could um, cover them. Yes. So with stem stitch, which I've already demonstrated here, you could also use back stitch, which I'm just demonstrating here. You travel forward and then travel back to the end of the previous stitch. Okay. So hence the name back stitch. Yep. So I can do that one. Yeah. So you could put back stitch in. So you can see that goes in quite rapidly. Trumpton and Chigley, says <gasps> Julia. Yeah, the oh. herbs was a favourite. Yep, parsley in the herb garden. She even bought um bought the video for her too. Yeah. Oh. Box of Delights. I used to like that one as well. That was a TV series and what was the one? There was a programme where they were in, uh, there were children in an old manor house and they'd got um, a little mouse that used to come to life. Uh, I can't remember what that was called, but it was a good one. Oh, I don't know. I used to have Tom's Midnight Garden. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I used to, um, yeah. I used to say that I would call any child of mine Minty. My and then Minta. Stephen vetoed that, saying that Minty McCarthy just sounded wrong. A little bit, I mean... <laughs> And then there was Minty in EastEnders, and I think that's oh, all anybody ever associates yeah, the name Minty that, that with, rather than well. Araminta. Araminta. I remember yeah. that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Araminta. I like that. Yeah, no. Aww. Minty McCarthy Happy apparently days. was not happening. Whereas now we have a daughter that calls herself Mimi. So we have Mimi McCarthy instead. <laughs> if you ask her what her name is, she'll say it's Mimi. Mimi McCarthy. <laughs> and uh, mine says that she sounds like a showgirl. Oh, she does sound a little bit like a... Mimi Lola. <laughs> yeah, McCarthy. Well, <laughs> see, I, I don't know why, but I, I always wanted to be called Sylvia when I was wow, like little. Wow, that's a name. Like really little. <laughs> but I think it probably went back to the glittery thing, sound like silver. Oh, uh, so possibly, possibly. <laughs> so I don't know. We were reading The Secret Seven last night, and Emily told us she wanted to be called Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Babs. <laughs> right, Bob. <laughs> that that's I don't, so brilliant I don't, I don't i don't associate barbara as being with a little girl no it's a, it's an adult it's an adult i always name. think i always like think Douglas. but like lucy i don't know any grown-ups known called lucy i only know children called lucy it's a strange so, phenomenon do you know how i'm yeah. sure there are grown-ups it's a lovely name same with barbara but barbara is an adult name yes lucy is a, is a young person name yeah. i think but only because of my association of people I no, know no, with those No, no, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> so it just, it just made me... And also, there aren't that many Barbaras now, like baby Barbaras. <laughs> baby Barbara. <laughs> baby Barbara. <laughs> yeah. 
You see, my friend called her daughter Rita, which I, is, a, again, you don't get very many baby Ritas. And her son is, is Doug. I like that. Douglas. Oh, but I know Pearl as well. Oh, you see, those names are making and a comeback. And these are making a comeback. They are. So they are. Pearl. You, I mean, to go with the mother of Pearl teeth. <laughs> We're going in a full, full circle. They're really circle. pleasing full circle. We have yeah. come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, I thought I'd show you leaf stitch. Oh, yes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and come over to the left, and then I'm going to do the same thing over to the right. You possibly pull your lapel. Oh, am I draping? Wow. It's because I'm... There you go. Sometimes it wants to focus on your on your on your glittery bits. I will shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so I will um, shuffle over. Yes. Thanks. Oh, so now Bagpus. I wondered how long until someone mentioned Bagpus. Professor Yaffle and the little mice. We will mend it. We will bring it. We will make it fine, fine, fine. Love them. Um, yeah. Saggy old cloth cat. Oh. They only did 13 episodes of that. It felt like what? it was more. I know. 13, is that it? Yeah, I've got the video of that as well. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, she, she saw a post saying that you only realise how many people you dislike when you come to name your child. It's so true. <laughs> and when you've taught for 10 years and then you have to name oh, your yeah, child. Oh, yeah, association, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think that I ever taught a well-behaved Kieran or Kaylee or... And I just, they, they just were not names that said well behaved child to me. No, I just didn't have Ashley any. Ashley for me yep. is one, I don't think I've ever but it's, taught it's, a well behaved Ashley. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I hadn't taught a Freddie. Yeah. And it just sounded like a really friendly name. It and yet when friendly we were and solid. Yeah. And like yet he's when a we good kids, chap, a good egg. He is a good, oh, he's such a good and egg. And also, like he could be a racing car driver from the 1920s. I, like I mean, it. you know, why what's not? not to like about that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All of those things. All of the above. Or he could be friends with Poirot. Oh, he could be. I'd like to be friends with Poirot. I'd like to be friends with Poirot. But Freddie sounds like he could be friends with some uh, Poirot. Yeah. I remember watching Eric, our great Dane, on Rock <laughs> Beach leaping across. Um, to every dog he could see and just assuming that they would be his friends so when you get 12 stone of dane come at you at a pace um they nine times out of ten were his friend apart from Aww. a few little terriers that used to chase him and bite him oh. but, but he had a special command for that to get out of the way of the terriers because he never retaliated yeah and i remember saying to Stephen, i just hope that <laughs> that our our child just assumes everyone's his friend because wouldn't that just that's make nice. life much nicer. It's a nice way of working in the world. And and Freddie does just assume that everyone's his friend, and so they are. Yeah, it's a nice place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is looking rather lovely, by the way. Yeah, so what you do is you keep repeating the stitch. So you come up in between the two stitches that you've just got. So you overlap a little and bit. And then you, yeah, so you back up a little. So you get this little plaited effect in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So... So I'm coming up in between two stitches. So the last two stitches that mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but baguette mm. and cheese. So you just keep going. It is, yeah. Children's names, it's a minefield. <laughs> really sweet. So just a straight stitch to get the point and that's it. Yeah. That looks very delicate. Come up and down to the same hole. Apart from anything else. Mm. So you're really seeing that um, show up, really seeing the read of that. So you can see with the chain stitch, you're coming up and down to the same kind of hole, if possible, each time. Oh, I think we keep freezing a little bit on Facebook. Oh, no, no, no. We're good. Something odd is happening on the old Facebook. Marvellous. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not Julia says, um, I'm, I'm assuming you don't mean... Um, but I it used to get stuck doing Scottish country dancing. It was country and you're stuck with a person country dancing who can't skip. How can people not skip? I didn't think it was possible to not be able to skip if you were, you know, fully 
functioning. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's harder than you'd think, apparently. Um, really? Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I got stuck with the child who couldn't skip, trying to country dance. Wow. You'd kind of be leaping and cavorting around. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you make up for them not being able to skip i'm, I'm, did a, you good, I'm a good skipper I'm a, it it was just it just didn't work it was it did not make country dancing enjoyable you know you just i just wanted somebody who could skip that was, yeah. all. that was all i wanted all i wanted wasn't asking for a lot so yeah anyway what should we do now um You've seen chain stitch, you've seen fly stitch, you've seen leaf stitch, you've seen race chain band, you've seen back stitch, you've seen la 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 la. Feather stitch, let's do feather stitch, that's a nice one. Uh, Where are we going for now? Oh, we're we going in for a different pink. We're going for a mid pink again, but we're going to go um, into this one here so you can see it. Uh, So any of the stitches I've used in these leaves, it, or the petals, if there was anything that you particularly liked or particularly disliked, you could just repeat ones. Um, so you don't have to have them, um, the full range of stitches in there if you don't want. You can choose to replicate um, particular stitches if you wanted to. Okay. So your call on that. I've given you choices. Just starting the thread. As so these are mainly serving suggestions. Yeah, I mean, as always, I mean, it's it's you know, it's a it's a movable feast. You can choose to put what you want where. I don't, I, I don't like rules too greatly, you know. So <laughs> I don't, really, I don't want to be the person telling you what to do all the time. So. Um, <laughs> You know, you must put this here and there, and no, you decide what you like and put it there. Um, but yeah, you could follow mine exactly. You've got a stitch plan in here, which I'll show you later. But I think I would, whilst I got used to stuff because I'm yeah. new to. Well, well, I'm not new. I've done lots of these shows. Whilst you're uncertain. But I would, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be that um, it could be that you wanted to practice some of the petal stitches on the calico beforehand, as I say. And then you might think, well, I really enjoyed doing that one, but I'm not so keen on that one. So I'd like to put more of this one and less of that one. So, um, but practice always helps. They're all pretty much the same complexity as each other. They're all the quite straightforward following the diagrams and just doing them. But if you, um, and you can watch this back as well, but um, if you felt that one was not for you, then you don't have to put it in. It's fine. Nobody's looking. So, <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we're going to do feather stitch. So um, I've come up in the peak here. So are we swapping to the close camera? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to find out why we keep freezing. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Okay. That's the answer. So I didn't do very well on that either. There <laughs> we go. Not a problem. Yeah, it's all good. So we're going, we've come up in the peak. I'm going down on one side and then I'm going to come up left of the centre just lower than the place I went down in the loop and then I'm going to travel across to the right hand edge level with where I am at the moment and then I'm going to come up just right of the centre below where I'm at the moment and then we're going to go you kind of traverse across it's serpentines across the piece so go down on the left hand outline come up left of the centre lower than where we are at the moment go down on the right And come up right of the centre. So you can do these really close together. You can do them far apart if you wanted. It's completely your call. Um, so these are quite open. Oh yeah, looks nice. You can really see and it goes in quite quickly. I've done them quite open so you can really see how they travel across. The thing is that black so it pops, doesn't it, with all yeah, those colours? Yeah, exactly. Really kind of zings, doesn't it? So. There's 
as I say, I've done it quite open here so you could really see it quite clearly. But you can do it much closer than that if you wanted to. And that's beautiful. Could you go and fill in with different colours if you wanted to? Yeah, you could, like a put, shade? you could put little French knots, you could put little straight stitches in here, you could put a couple of bugles in there, like little beads, completely your call. Cool. And then you can edge that again, you could use any of the edging stitches we've talked about. So you could use stem stitch, chain stitch, whatever you want really. So um, to, to get that in there, I'm just going to bring that up out of the way. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, chain stitch so again um, the outer one here has got chain stitch in it so okay. it's um, we've just seen chain stitch so but I'll just repeat it so you get a flavour of that uh, will you will you ever finish this or will this just stay as a demonstration uh, piece this is just a sample piece so this will just sit here like this because I've already worked it once um, so I've got a finished piece so so if you ever do it anywhere else? Yeah, it will just sit. Do you have lots and lots of half-finished bits? Yes. <laughs> Is that a really silly question to so ask? So many pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I was saying the other day that most people call them UFOs, but I like PhDs, projects half done. I'm yeah. very highly qualified. Yes. A lot of PhDs. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is very true. Very so, true. I've had a little clear out um, because they were all in my cupboard behind. So they've all had to go and be <laughs> sifted through. Yeah. And see if they can find better homes. If, if I'm being realistic about whether or not I'm actually ever going to finish it off or could it be passed on to someone else <laughs> to finish and practice on and learn. I think the thing is, though, it's um, it, sometimes you don't need to finish something. something you've, you, you've maybe learned what you want to learn. Do you know, sometimes that's a really nice idea. I'd never thought of it like that. Yeah, I mean, if it's taught you what you wanted to know, my work here it's is done, done its job. Yeah, you know, other things you might think, mm. oh, I really love that. Why didn't I finish it? And I'll come back to it. You know, the nice thing about it is it will wait for you. You're in charge, not it. So oh, we forget that. Yeah, we do forget, forget that. that. We we put all these time deadlines on ourselves mm. that aren't real. So we kind of oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. And this has to be done. Blah, blah, blah. And in reality, there's none of that pressure. It all comes from us. So it's that thing about, actually, have I learned, have I got out of it what I wanted to, to get out of it? Have I learned what I wanted to learn? If you've done that and you don't feel the need to complete it, you don't think you're going to learn anything else from it, then step away from it. That's but if true. you think, oh, actually, I've learned what I want to learn, but it would be a lovely gift for somebody else, then finish it, give it away. Like, you don't need to have it in your house. If you don't feel the need to do that, then you know you're done with it, aren't you? So, and then other things you think, oh, yeah, why didn't I? Sometimes you, in, the, in the kind of vigour of doing something, you lose that enthusiasm. So then eventually you'll come back to it and you'll kind of be like, oh, it's a beautiful project. I've forgotten about that. Why don't I? And then you'll feel the enthusiasm rise again. Yeah. So it, everything has its moment, doesn't it? It's uh, to everything a time and season. So it's that thing. Reason a season or a lifetime. Exactly. That's it. So that's the one. That's it. That is very true. I'm going to, um, yes. Yes, so. and it's going back through things, looking at them and thinking, do I actually love it? Yeah. Do, do I actually, yeah. or did I just have it because I thought it was a waste to throw it away? Yeah, I think it's that thing, you know, you, it doesn't owe you anything. You don't it owe it anything. And that's the lovely thing about this, isn't it? And yeah. I think we forget that. Yeah. So it's, if it isn't going to give you something, if it's not going to give you joy from seeing it completed, if it's not going to give you more learning, then you don't need to worry about it. Perfect. So... Perfect. Yes. Now this gives me great joy because it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. So what we're going to do, as I say, we're going to do a much larger version of the chain stitch, so potentially easier for you to see. Um, so up and down into the same hole if possible, down into as near to the same ho hole as possible in that loop, making it nice and open, nice size stitch and quite long compared to some of the other stitches that we're doing. So this is the chain stitch that we're going to sit down the middle of this particular stem. So this is the thing I always think about when people say that they've got, they haven't got the patience for something. It's about finding the thing for you that doesn't involve patience. Yes, so that's me, it, isn't it? Yeah, embroidery doesn't involve patience because I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. Um, so I don't worry about that, whereas if, um, you know, for other people it's knitting, for other people it's crochet, for other people it's 
patchwork, it's card making, whatever it is, you find your thing. Yeah. You then don't notice the time. It's, it's a very pleasant way of spending your time. So it, that's the thing. There's a craft for everybody, I think. Um, it's just the thing about finding your craft. And sometimes it's not even just about the craft. It's about the technique. Yeah, for it's some finding people, your joy, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I remember um, the very first time that I ever encountered Philip Jacobs on um, on social media. And mm. he, he actually um, sort of... He commented on an interview that I did with Kaif, mm. and he, his comment on it was that this was a presenter who had obviously found her joy, mm. and I, I hadn't considered it. I just knew that I I loved the colour, yeah, and I loved yeah. talking to people that have knowledge and love what they do and have that passion, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's where my joy is. And he's right. No, well, it's where my joy is. Well, this is it. I mean, and I think it's that thing, isn't it? It's about trying to engage with the things that give you pleasure. Yeah. So, and as I say, for some people it's very specific. So it's not even about the the you know the craft. It's about the technique. So it could be that beading's your thing, or counted works your thing, or you know the free stitches. It's um it's very specific to each person. It could be even the way that the thread feels as it passes through your fingers. So you like to work with wool, or you prefer to work with silks. So it's it's metal threads that you love the appearance of. So it's really about finding that thing that gives you that uh, boost. So, and then we're going to put stem stitch on the outside. And it can be slightly longer stem stitch than we did before because the shape is slightly longer. So you can see this will go in quicker. So the stem stitch on this will go on both sides. Okay. So it will go on this side and it will go on this side. So once you've done your raised chain band. So... So you'll see you'll get a lovely um, you'll get a lovely finish. To that. Oh, and the then I think the colours on this are just beautiful. It really jumps, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then the last two techniques on here our satin stitch which I know we've demonstrated before and herringbone which I know I demonstrated last time I was here so um, so shall we run through what's in the kits yeah let's have a look at the kits marvelous so that's so beautiful and can we just have a little recap as to what it's gonna look like finished yeah so that's that's how it looks finished there you go so just compare and contrast oh, oh lovely. What I prepared earlier so um, so yeah so that's how it goes um, the finished thing and then in the kit, you get, um, I'll get one out that I haven't been slaughtering. Mm. So everything that we need is in the kit. Do we everything even get a needle in there? Everything you need is in the kit. Yeah, you get two oh. needles, because, you know, you can drop one if you're not careful. So um, you get your brochure. So it's got the, if I yeah, go on. rest it on. Go, go close it's up. It's got the... Um, another close-up picture of this it's got the list of what you get in in your and that's all on your website as well yeah um you get the stitch plan nice you get the color plan so what you Lovely. put where you get um the stitch diagram so nice and big so you don't get confused about what you're doing and start on one thing and end up on another <laughs> um it's like you made it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's got um, it's got the order of work with close-up photographs, so you just work through. Wow. So you know exactly what you're putting where and how. Um, it's incredibly detailed. Yeah, so the idea is to say that, I, you know, I try if possible to make them as clear as possible so that there's no confusion about what you're doing, where or how or the order of what to work things in. So then you've got your beads and your sequins. Nice, with so extra glitter. You've got extra extra in there and extra glitter to go. Um, you've got your calico. You've got your fabric marked up with your needles in the fabric. So, oh, so that's where we need to yeah, look for those. So okay. they'll, be in, they'll be in the fabric uh, somewhere. Yeah, there. <laughs> so just make sure that you don't prod yourself with those. That is pain is not a good way to start a project. <laughs> Not in my personal you know. opinion. No, 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 no. You never can tell. Um, and then we've got the 
seven skeins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So you've got your seven skeins there. Beautiful. So you can see there. if I here we are. Pop that in front. So oh. you can see nice colourway against that black. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So that's all on the website. Are ready there to many go. more of the deco collection to come? Um, I didn't do any more for them. I've done two so far, but actually I designed them a while ago and then stitched them. And I've come back to them because, you know, it's one of those things that I, I'm such a magpie for visuals. Yeah. So I came back to the deco ones just because the black just worked so beautifully with those hot colours. So. Yeah. Um, so I think it's prob possibly something I'll come back to, but I've kind of got some Art Nouveau designs floating at the back as well. So that's oh, an entirely different, me, they're rich, but entirely different colour palette. So it might be that those take precedence, but at the moment there's the two um, to go in that set. So, um, but Do yeah. Do you ever get to a stage where you don't have the next idea? No. There's Never. just not, there's not enough time in the day. Um, I just, it's constant, you know, I think that's the, the thing about kind of being visually curious, like, you know, intellectually curious. You kind of, it's the what, back to the whys and what ifs and hows. Um, so constantly seeing things that I think, crikey, that's amazing, that's beautiful. That, that colour combination really kind of draws my eye. You know, I was, I've been um, in the Highlands recently and the colours up there at this time of year, it, you forget how amazing they are. You know, the leaves, you know, they're so vibrant and so you see things and you kind of like i need to remember that <laughs> yeah. and um like the where i was there was an incredible you know the river ness was walk, was flowing through and it was amazing kind of really deep gray blue um and then there was this incredible kind of copper colored beach bush like mm. beach hedge and then um it was just you know flashes of gold with the trees behind that kept moving and it was just these incredible just colour combinations. Yeah. So, no, for me, it's just that you don't have time to do everything. Um, so it's it's that thing about constantly being like designing's quick, embroidery is slow in comparison. So yeah. trying to find the time to be able to get everything stitched. Now I'm very fortunate because I've actually had a few people who volunteered to do some stitching for me, um, who I've who've known I've known for a long time now. So they I've got a couple of people who really kindly will stitch and then send them to me like I'll send them plans and fabrics and stuff and they'll send things back so that um because the, the difficult thing is in my head things are finished like so yeah, yeah. we've um, moved on to the next thing well it's it's difficult because you kind of when you are designing things you know because I've got to the point now where I know what the textures are going to look like I know pretty yeah. much how those color combinations yeah. are going to sit so by the time I've got a, a plan of it on paper that I've done a color plan and a stitch plan in my head I have a pretty good feel for that so um so trying to get to that point where it actually is completed in the real world that can be the push <laughs> sometimes so it's a good job that i really enjoy stitching so the enjoy the stitching process because otherwise you j i just have a lot of paperwork yeah. and um <laughs> but yeah it's one of those things it's funny because uh you kind of think uh it, when you see when, when something goes away and you've kind of been separated from the making process you've designed it and then somebody else stitches it and comes it comes back it's fantastic because it's like a, an amazing surprise, you know, because it's been fully formed here and I've, I've kind of moved away from it yeah. onto other projects yeah. so that, that can be completed. And then, and then, it, could, and then it just t turns up one day <laughs> fully formed and you kind of like, uh, you know, that's amazing. Like, that's fantastic. It's such a beautiful thing and um, to have that happen. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm very fortunate that there are really kind people who are kind of like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, because there's a lot of people out there kind of like, who I know now, they're kind of like, I don't have room in my house for any more stitching, but I want, I love to stitch and I want a purpose to stitch. Yeah. So yeah. they've kind of, kind of come back to me and gone, yeah, I'll do some of your sample stitching for you. So, well, there um, are only so many hours in the day, aren't there? Well, that's, this is it. So thing. it's, so that's, that's amazing. I'm incredibly lucky in that sense, because as I say, it means that I get to kind of, for me the design process is swift so i get to explore as many things as possible and there's certain things that i like i have to stitch this one this has to be i have to see this developing under my fingers and that's a lovely thing because you kind of like um does that become a favorite no it's funny because i don't really have that many favorites so you kind of um it things become favorites generally when i associate make the making of them because i'll be making things 
and speaking to people and being in places because I take my embroidery with me all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's with me constantly. So um, sometimes they become favourites because I associate them with particular places or people. Ah, nice. Um, or events. Um, but it's not that a design becomes my favourite particularly. It's because once I've once I've explored that, I've got to that end point, it either inspires something else, so I'll be like, but I haven't, what would happen if I did this now? Or what would happen <laughs> yeah. if that happened? Uh, and it jumps onto the next part of it, the next phase, and that kind of gets shelved. Or I'm done with it, you know what I mean? I've, I've kind of like, oh, I've explored that now. And there's so many other things to see and yeah. so many other things that yeah. inspire you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that, so more than anything else. But, um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's a joy. It's a constant source of joy. So I'm incredibly lucky to be able to um And to be to able to share it. it as well. That's, that's a really beautiful yeah, thing Yeah, I mean, too. but that's one of the biggest sources of joy for me, though, because it's, um, I meet amazing people. I get to speak to amazing people, you know, online. These people you've never met before, but you've had this connection. Yeah. And, um, and as I say, I get to teach, to teach people all over the place and to, you know, currently at the moment online meeting all these people and talking about people and I've been talking about this with people and and that's the thing you know you you're at some point of their journey sharing that with them um and that's incredible so and as I say regardless of where I am or what I'm doing I always learn something new about my subject so yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're teaching a beginner or you know there's they've got a way of seeing something that might be different to the way that you normally interact with it or see it and they can spark an idea and you'll be like never thought about that before or they'll ask a question you'd be like you're the first person to ask that question I'm not sure you, have kind, of, <laughs> you kind of have a think about, about it you. and you'll be like I'm gonna have to think about that or it kind of you know it kind of reminds you of something so it's um it is it's a precious thing um to be given that gift so it's uh, lovely now talking about precious things to be given as a yes, gift yes. um this would make an absolutely stunning gift whether the um cozy Cozy, yes. Whether it is something that you make and gift, or make and keep, or yeah. gift as an entire kit to someone who yeah. likes to stitch, either which way, any way up, it's rather stunning. Show us what you have in your hands. Oh, I have in my hands a beautiful array oh. of threads. Oh. Oh. So, if I just put the linen underneath, you can see. It just looks really rich on the yeah, linen, doesn't it? doesn't it? So, um, and the nice thing about this project, it's a really controlled size. So, um, all you've got to do is, and if I put it on here and give you the, my hand next to it, I don't mind which way we go, uh, there you go. Um, you can see, I mean, it's tiny. You know, it is, it is literally a tape, tape measure size it's so yeah it's really it manageable a, it, it's really manageable so for those of you who are saying patience is a problem there's really no excuse so um yeah i did mine i think it was stitching for part of a day and stitching it together i think you stitch it together it took about two hours oh, okay so but that was me working out what i was doing at the same time so <laughs> you've got instructions <laughs> so um so i was trying to work out what i wanted and how i wanted it to look so the idea is that you um do your normal stitching um it has full instructions in the book i'll show you that in a minute and you do a band so you've got one for one side one for the other and then you've got your band that goes along the edge shall we see that shall we so see that you, you can see that so if i are we doing close up here yeah, yeah so Obviously, you've got oh, your... Oh, it looks like a little happy face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you've got your other side. So these are all stitches that we've previously done, isn't yes. it? Yes. And if you've, yeah. if you've been buying into the Pentacular range, then yes, yes. You'll, you'll already be recognising these and going, exactly. oh, I see what yeah. Helen has done. So yeah. you'll, see, you'll see how they all kind of meet together. If I grab the other ones, which should deconstruct your decoration. That's okay. Deconstruct <laughs> away. So you can see how they relate... <laughs> um, how they relate to this. So I love how see. they are also standalone items. Yeah, you can have them individually, you can have have them together. So but they're a family as well. So it's just it's just nice to have things that go together sometimes, isn't it? I mean I'm not a matchy matchy kind of person, but um sometimes it's just nice to be able to it might be that you just want, you know, you just want a scissors keep and then needle cozy. You just you you the tape cut measure cozy you kind of choose what suits you and your needs but as i say they are they are particularly the cozy they're very small and 
easily achievable. Do you know, yeah, it's not, I could do that. Yeah, you don't think to yourself, well, that's going to take up way too much time between now and whenever you want it for. But so, I'd be really chuffed that I'd done it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. And the other nice thing is that they're for items that you're going to use them, you're going to keep them, and you're going to use them. And every time you need your, your tape measure, it's, you're going to get it out and you're going to think, oh, it's just like a sense of achievement. Or if you've given it to somebody, someone's given it to you, you're going to feel like it feels special because when, in reality, when people are spending time working on something that they're given to you, that's a beautiful thing because we don't have a lot of time. I'm, obviously, sometimes in lockdown, we have a lot of time. But, <laughs> um, but normally, under ordinary circumstances, people's time is, an ex is a really kind of rare commodity. Yeah, no, so the absolutely. fact that people are making something for you and giving that to you, that's a beautiful, a beautiful process, I think. So, um, so as I say, it's a really achievable, makeable size. So, um, so, yeah, so everything's marked onto the fabric. And then um, you've got in the pack, you've got your fabric marked on with your needles as well. You've got your foam padding, which is adhesive backed foam padding, which... Oh, you bought that last time for oh, the... Oh, yes. Um, so it's squidgy. So yes. it has a really nice feel to it because it's squidgy. So if you drop it on the floor, the plastic casing of the tape yeah. measure is not going to crack. And the tape measure is in the kit as well. Yes, the tape measure is in the kit. So you get your tape measure. Um, some of them are different colours, but you're covering them, so it doesn't matter. Um, you get your machine thread um, for construction. You've got your two mother appel buttons and your length of ribbon that's going to be the pull. Um, now, I know how much time goes into creating kits. Yeah. And these must really... Yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, it's that thing, you know, we talk always about kind of legacy and heirloom and, and the idea that, you know, what you're making should feel worth it and that you should open a pack and feel excited. Yes. It should be a gift to yes. yourself yes. for the making process, even if you're intending the actual final product to be a gift for somebody else, potentially. So it should feel lovely, you know, so it should feel nice. The Which fabric should the feel gift, good. Isn't it? If, you've yeah. had, if you've enjoyed yeah. stitching it exactly. and the person enjoys receiving it, then we're all good. Exactly. Happiness all round, that's what I say. So those are all the bits and bobs. And then you've got your instructions as well. Um, so I don't know why I've just put the pinkos away. Um, so, yeah. So you've got your instructions there. So front sheet as usual, uh, close up. And then you've got front, back and side mm -hmm. of, um, we're on the small camera. Uh, front, back and side there, you've got, a uh, full list of what you get in the pack. Um, mm -mm -mm. Stitch plan, colour plan. You are very thorough with these and they're, they're always laid out to a similar to a similar way, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, same so format. The they should, yeah, be fit, they the should feel format. familiar. Yeah. Um, so stitch uh, diagrams and then step by steps of what you're doing and how. So. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Blah, blah, blah. So, um, so yeah, so full full uh, information in there. So it should be pretty straightforward to then make your own uh, make your own uh, tape measure cosy. Excellent. Because how have you survived this long without a tape measure cosy? I just question. love the fact that it's called a cosy, and I'm very <laughs> I'm very into that right now. I, do, do you know what? You, everyone needs a bit more cosy in their life, to be honest. It's one Don't of those they? things. Don't they? So, I love and I mean, the number of people that have said that they're freezing on here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're just meaning the internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did we ever decide? I think um, one of my clever team have put up a question asking people what they would like you to make next. Mm. And if it could be a Bear Grylls Do we have jumpsuit with flames coming hunker, out of the flares. Hunker, hunker, burning love, yeah. <laughs> then um, please do. <laughs> Well, I don't I think mean, anybody would complain about that. Yeah. So, did we get any answers on that, or are we or, are we putting the question onwards? <laughs> I don't know. So I think the question is ongoing. Ongoing question. Okay. So let's give it maybe uh, a week, and then if we've come up with answers, then that's great. And uh, otherwise, I shall just make something. Can yeah. you be surprised next time I see you? Oh. So um, and that's going to be the start of December. Yeah. So start of December. So I'm back and it will be the last part of the Pinktacular range and the um, cruel work, um, the Jacobean style cruel work. Loving uh, that. Stag slash reindeer uh, with the choice of the red nose or otherwise. Have so, we decided hmm. what we're going to then do next year? No, it's all to play for. 
Have you got any sneaky ideas, things you'd like to do? Do you know what? I mean, we've not done a lot of metal thread here. Um, no, so we, we do a haven't. bit of metal. I think we need more beading in our life. Yes. So um, maybe some applique, um, hand applique and embellishment. Um, but no, I mean, I'm open to ideas. White work. White work's nice in the spring, mm. uh, spring, summer. So we've not done any white work here either. So, um, but yeah, so open to ideas, really. If people have got ideas of things they'd like to see, um, then give us a shout. Maybe some counted thread work. So, because we've not done a lot of that here either. You can't um, ask for more than that, can you? Yeah, give you us know. a shout. Let us know what you want to do. Fuck so, yes. um, and we'll we'll make it happen. <laughs> so, but that's but that is very accommodating of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we try, we try. Oh, uh, Helen, yeah. as ever, I've learnt, I've enjoyed. <laughs> You've been amazing. Thank you, and you. Nice um, to be here as always. And yeah, I've got I've got things I've got things to go away and think about now. <laughs> there goes jumpsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Amongst other things, amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a joy. And I will very, very, very much look forward to December. Excellent. Well, lovely to see you. Thanks for having me and thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody. Um, we will pleasure. be here tomorrow with that beautiful quilt behind you. Ooh, the William nice. Morris. So that's Jane Alcock. So we'll be here 10 a.m. on the dot. And if I'm organised, I'll see if I can load some kits for that tonight because Geraldine I know that you've got to work tomorrow. Very go. good. All right give us a wave.